So epigenetics is a really tricky part of AQA A-level biology. I'm gonna take you through all the key terms you need to know, all of the content, all of the processes, and show you how to apply it to exact questions to really master this topic. What is acetylation? What is meant by methylation? And how do they influence genetic expression? Well, stay with me guys, drop a like on the video, subscribe, and let's master this topic together. Let's get into it. So let's get into epigenetics, guys. This is one of my favorite topics to teach because it's on the cutting edge of biological research. So what does AQA want you to know, first of all? Well, it wants you to know all about the epigenetic control of gene expression in eukaryotes. Epigenetics involves heritable changes, which means they can be passed on in gene function without changes to the base sequence of DNA. These changes are caused by changes in the environment that inhibit transcription by firstly, increased methylation of the DNA or decreased acetylation of associated histones. And the relevance of epigenetics on the development and treatment of disease, especially cancer, is something that AQA have highlighted. Now you might be thinking, Mr. Howe, why is there a dime bar on the front slide of your presentation? Now I'm not gonna give away all of my secrets now, but stay tuned, this is really gonna help you remember this process. What is epigenetics? Well, environmental changes can cause heritable changes in gene function without changing the base sequence of DNA. This is what epigenetics is. Diet, stress, and toxins can subtly alter genetic inheritance. DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones and they, along with the DNA, are covered in chemicals called tags. The chemical tags form a second layer known as the epigenome. And I always say to my students, think about an epidemic, that's when a disease spreads out of a country. Or think about an epipen, which is an injection of adrenaline that someone who has an allergic reaction may receive. That's adrenaline from outside of the body. So the epigenome is outside of the DNA bases. Now the epigenome controls the shape of the DNA histone complex and histones are proteins that coil DNA up. Inactive genes can be kept in a tightly packed arrangement and therefore cannot be read, meaning they're switched off. Epigenetic silencing is where genes cannot be read due to the tightly packed arrangement. Now remember, when we say read, that actually means expressed. That means when DNA polymerase or RNA polymerase comes along and reads a gene forming a new molecule of mRNA or DNA. Now in this case, when we talk about gene expression, we're talking about RNA polymerase forming mRNA, which will lead to a protein. So how does the epigenome influence gene expression? Well, first of all, the epigenome can unwrap active genes, exposing the DNA bases and switching genes on. The DNA code is fixed and it's only changed by mutations, but importantly, the epigenome is, is flexible and our epigenomes will change depending on our environment, whether we smoke, whether we read books, whether we exercise, and they're all things that will affect our epigenome and we can pass them on to our children. Now the epigenome of a cell acts like a cellular memory and it accumulates small changes throughout the course of your life. So acetylation and methylation next of all. Well, acetylation of histones leads to the activation or inhibition of a gene. Activation means that the gene will be switched off. Inhibition means the gene will be switched off. Methylation next of all is where the enzymes are attracted that can remove methyl groups. And we can see in my diagram here at the bottom that we've got the nucleus and within the nucleus, we have chromosomes and chromosomes are super coiled DNA. And those matchstick kind of structures we see are actually spiraled up coiled DNA. And we can see that histones here, they're proteins that wind up the DNA so that it coils forming those characteristic chromosomes that we've all learned about. 
and those chromosomes form in prophase. Now, the DNA histone complex next of all. Now, this is referred to as chromatin, and you'll have learned about this in the cells topic in unit two. Now, where the association of histones with DNA is weak, the DNA histone complex is loosely packed. So this means that transcription factors can bind, meaning the genes are switched on. So check out my video on the regulation of transcription if you want more information on this. I really dive into transcription factors there. Now, where the association is stronger and DNA is tightly packed, transcription factors can't bind. So think about it being coiled up and the transcription factors being unable to bind to the exposed bases. Now, this will mean that genes are switched off. Therefore, condensation of the DNA histone complex inhibits transcription. And condensation of the DNA histone complex means that it becomes more coiled and tightly packed. Now, condensation of the DNA histone complex is caused by either decreased acetylation or increased methylation. And they're both chemical changes to the DNA. So, I talked about this on the first slide of the presentation. Now, this is where my favorite chocolate bar, dime bars, really helps students because this is a, a blooming tricky topic. So, decreased acetylation, DA, or increased methylation, IM, are going to condense the DNA and switch the gene off. So, just remember that dime bars switch off genes and you'll be absolutely set in the exam, guys. So acetylation next of all. Remember the link reaction. We've heard about acetyl coenzyme A before. So we've got a bit of a link to an acetyl group there. Now acetylation is where an acetyl group is transferred to a molecule and deacetylation is where an acetyl group is removed from a molecule. Now, decreased acetylation increases the positive charges on histones. Now, DNA is a negatively charged molecule because of phosphate. So if you've got a positively charged histone, the positive histone will be attracted to the negative DNA and they'll associate more strongly. And that's going to coil the DNA up. So the positive charges on histone increases their attraction to the phosphate groups of DNA. And this is going to block the transcription factors, switching the genes off. Next, increased methylation of DNA. Now, methylation is the addition of a methyl group, and a methyl group is CH3. And that will be specifically added to the base cytosine. Now, methylation prevents the binding of transcription factors to the DNA. And methylation attracts proteins that condense the DNA histone complex and means that the genes are switched off. So let's look at how we can apply this tricky knowledge to some exam questions next of all. Question one, define what is meant by epigenetics. So pause the video and we'll go through the answer. The answer is heritable changes in gene expression for one mark. Your second mark is for saying without any changes to the DNA base sequence. Because remember, a change to the DNA base sequence is a mutation, not epigenetics. Question two, fill in this table with ticks where appropriate. So we've got a table here with control factors on the left and whether it binds with DNA or protein on the right. So pause the video and we'll go through the answer. The answer is, for estrogen, that will bind with protein. So that will bind with estrogen receptors to form the estrogen receptor complex. Again, check out my video on the regulation of transcription for more on this. And then that estrogen, estrogen receptor complex binds to DNA. For methyl groups, that binds directly to DNA. So the cytosine group to be specific. For acetyl groups, they bind with the protein, the histone to be specific. Question three then. Methylation can lead to cancer. Explain how. The answer is methyl groups could be added to bases in a tumor suppressor gene for one mark. This will inhibit transcription of the tumor suppressor gene 
for a second mark. And for a third mark, you could say that this leads to uncontrolled cell division. Now, you may have thought about proto-oncogenes, but actually the role of proto-oncogenes is to stimulate cell division. So actually preventing proto-oncogenes from be being expressed would slow down cell division so you wouldn't get the mark for that. Okay, guys, so that's everything we've got time for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.